I'm Atuba George. Hey, today is Friday. Praise God. Listen, I always tell you this. Take your weekend to just listen to these messages again and again and again. Listen from Monday at least to Friday. If you have the time, start from the beginning of the series and listen so you get everything in perspective. Praise God. Are you ready to call for that daily bread? Join me in faith right now. Say, Father, I demand for my daily bread. It's coming to me right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are still talking about the revelation of eternal life. You see, everything I've been sharing with you, notice, we've not even started talking about the manifestation of eternal life. Now I'm talking about the revelation of eternal life. There is the revelation of it, then there is the manifestation of eternal life. So we are dealing with the, man, the revelation of it. How do you receive eternal life? How do you assess eternal life? What do you know by eternal life? And Jesus clearly said it. He said, this is life eternal. That they will know God. Because he is the only true God. There is no other God apart from him. That they will know him. And they will know him through Jesus Christ. That Jesus will be the one to guide. Why do you think Jesus kept saying, follow me? Why do you think Jesus said, I'll share that with you yesterday? If you continue in my word, he said, if you continue in Father's word, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciple and then you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Which truth was he referring to? He was referring to eternal life. That is the truth. That is the song. You remember when Jesus was before Pilate and Pilate asked him, what is truth? Oh, what a statement. What a question. What a question. But guess what? Annoyingly, he never waited for Jesus to answer him that question. He asked, what is truth? And then he walked away. Because Jesus said, this is why I was born. That I will be a witness of the truth. And Pilate said, what is truth? And walked away. I, I, I just felt Jesus was like, ah! <laughs> You see, I did not do it. It's not the truth that Pilate was asking about. Pilate sort of knew what he was talking about. And so maybe those contradictions or arguments were in his heart. So when Jesus said it, I was afraid to truth. He said, okay, so what is truth? He didn't say, what is the truth? He said, what is truth? Because see, being a judge, being a ruler for a time, see, one thing you need to understand about life is this. You see, the, the place of authority carries an anointing. And that anointing causes the person who sits on that throne to know things. Now, most times, most times, God makes sure that people who sit on the throne, they are godly. When I mean godly, I didn't say they are not wicked. I said they are godly or they didn't do wicked things. When I mean they are godly, it's... it's um, let me, let me use the phrase of something I've taught you before. Their names are in the book of life. See that? Okay. So now there are situations where God permits those whose names are not in the book of life at all to be on the throne. Okay. And in those times, there are times mostly, even in scriptures, there are times when God allows for judgment or allows for certain things. For example, when the children of Israel were in Egypt, you remember God have spoken to Abraham and said, your children, your seed is going to be, your children are going to be, is going to be in a foreign nation and they'll be in captivity and they'll be dealt with, afflicted for 400 years. And God said, after that, now he said they will be afflicted. Now, when they got into Egypt, they didn't get into Egypt physically. Now, when Jacob 
and his family, they, got into, they went to Egypt. They didn't go into Egypt as slaves, you remember? They went into Egypt in, at the instance of Joseph, who was the son of Jacob. And it was like, oh, look, I'm here. You guys, why do we keep going back and forth? Pharaoh has given me permission. You guys can come stay here. And, you know, like before, you remember um, in a castle, you see, God is wise. You remember when Isaac wanted to go down to Egypt? You remember, right? You remember Abraham went to Egypt and got some goods from, from Egypt. Now, Isaac wanted to go down to Egypt. The word of the Lord came to him and said, don't go down to Egypt. Don't. Why? Because the time had not yet come. Okay? So, he got to Jacob. And his son Joseph was the prime minister of Egypt. And Joseph said, oh daddy, all of you just come here. And he said, no, I, I need to see this my son that was lost. This my son that was dead. I, I need to see him. And the angel of the Lord never. Among Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one who received the most angelic visitation was Jacob. Yes, read your Bible. And no angel told him, don't go down this road. Why? Because the prophecy must be fulfilled. So they got into Egypt and the Pharaoh was kind to them, gave them a good place to stay. They were well treated. But then the Bible says, in the scheme of things, in the process of time, a Pharaoh arose who did not know Joseph. And suddenly that Pharaoh begin, began to think, these people, they are getting too large. We need to curtail. We need to curtail their growth and expansion. And they began to bring in principles. They began to bring in laws. You know the story. And the affliction started. You see, a Pharaoh who was not a godly seed arose to that throne. The Pharaoh that was there before him could hear from God. Yes, remember he had a dream from God that warned him about things to come. And Joseph interpreted that dream. But this other new Pharaoh, uh -uh, he cannot hear from God. And that's why God had to deal with him with signs and wonders because God couldn't communicate with him. Only one dream could have made him release the children of Israel. But no way, God could have reached, reach out to them. You see now, because God needed an ungodly Pharaoh to be on the throne at that time, to bring to pass that which he has spoken, to afflict the children of Israel. Now, why did God need an ungodly thing? Because, you see, no one, Hayanama, no one is designed by God to fulfill negative prophecies. Let that sink in. No one is designed by God to fulfill negative prophecies. So God did not create someone say you shall be fair and you will be so wicked to my children you will deal with them. No. The same story with Judas Iscariot. You know, some, some people thought, oh, just one disciple that went, uh, went rogue. No. Remember, Jesus prayed all night to choose his disciples. So he knew in choosing his disciples, he had to choose one devil. Judas was never a mistake. You need to understand this. Jesus knew before he chose Judas. Now, they were already around him. They were disciples around him. So he needed to choose 12 that would always be with him. And he knew, according to the scriptures, one of them should betray him. And no one has God written that his destiny is that he will betray the Son of God. None. There was no such writing. 
for any child of God, any seed of God whose name is in the book of life. And I'll tell you the truth. Before we were all born, God knew us before we were born. He had our names in the book of life. He had our names. And, and let me tell you this truth. One day, the last name on the book of life is going to be born. And when that name is born, then the end will come. And yeah. That's why God is so particular about children. People don't understand these things. So I say, hey, children don't come from God. Anybody just have God's forgiveness and give back to each other. Okay, continue your beliefs. But the Bible lets us know that God had written a book before the foundation of the world. One day, the last name will be born. So because no one whom God has created, written his name in the book, now the name of the book of life does not, is not a list, it's not a book that only contains a list of names. No. Everything about your life is written there. So Jesus said, look, it was written of me in the volume of the books. I come to do his will. That which was written concerning me. Everyone that is a godly seed, it has been written on you. So when Jesus was selecting these 12, he had to pick one whose name was never written in the book of life. So he chose Judas. And that's the reason he gave him a position to hold the bag. The miracles were not, never going to keep Jesus. The revelation was never going to keep Judas, sorry. The revelation was never going to keep Judas. The only thing that could keep him was something that would make keep him busy and then he can be benefiting from. So Judas was stealing from the bag. Jesus knew, he never complained, he never accosted him, just left him like that. Why? That was what was keeping him until he would fulfill his ministry. This is why you find Jesus speaking of Peter and Judas. Now, now Peter denied him. Judas betrayed him. Okay? So, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you. And his plan is to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. In other words, when you are converted, strengthen the brain. So, he knew Peter was going to go through a challenging period. And it's going to look like Peter would fall. But then he still gave him an assignment on the other side. When you are converted, then he said, I have prayed for you. But hey, you, have you wondered what he said concerning Judas? Did he know Judas was going to betray him? Yes, he knew. He said it. He said, one of you will betray me. And it was better for that one that he was never born. What a statement to say of one of your disciples. Think, brothers and sisters, think. He said, it was better for that one that he was never born. How can you say it is better for someone whose name is written in a book of life was never born? That's a great contradiction. And you know, Jesus would never contradict his father. So what does that tell you? He didn't say it was better when he, that one was never created. He said it was better he was never born. Meaning he was born, but he was not created by God. How can you say it is better for someone God created never to be born? We were first created before we were born. Are you getting the idea now? So Jesus knew. He even said it to his disciples. You remember when many of his disciples left following him. Then he turned to the twelve and said, will you also go away? Peter spoke up and said, to whom? He said, thou hast the word of life. And then Jesus, what was Jesus' re re response to that? Haven't I chosen you to ever yet one of you is a devil? And John testified and said, because he knew who it was that should betray him. See, that should betray him. So that was Judas' assignment from day one. And you see, it, it's sometimes it's, it's a prayer to pray that the Lord will help you not to fight the devils he has put around you. For your own glory. Yes. Because see, you need to understand this truth about life. And God. In the scheme of things. There is a role for the devil. To play in your life. 
My prayer for you is that when that season comes, you will not fight it. You know, as you know, sometimes we teach warfare, but then there are, there's time for everything. There's time to fight. There's time to stop fighting. There's time to wait and allow God to lead you. There's time for everything. But it needs wisdom, spiritual wisdom, to know which battles to choose to fight and which one to submit to the will of God. Jesus had the power. He said, if I want to, I can ask my father and he'll send legions of angels. But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled? That's wisdom. You, you don't want to experience any bad thing. Never at all. Every, you've entered warfare. I command, I bind. So God will never answer. Just like Peter. It was not in Peter's nature to betray Jesus. Oh, that's another day stuff. But let me try to explain to you. It was never in Peter's nature to betray Jesus. An anointing, I, I, allow me to use this word. It may be not, not be the appropriate word, but understand what I'm saying. Let me use the word. Something came on Jesus that was allowed by God for him to betray Jesus. Came on Peter that was allowed by God that he may betray Jesus. Because that was the only way to preserve his life. The only way to preserve heaven. Heaven took that decision and realized the only way to preserve Peter's life was to permit him, or rather permit Satan, to take charge of his life for a certain season. So God told Satan, he is yours between this time and when the cock crows. The moment the cock crows, Satan, you lose your power over Peter. And Peter said, ah, thank you, Lord. In his heart, he will finish Peter before the cock crows. But remember, Jesus had prayed. That was why a border was created. So that temptation season had time into it. I pray the Lord give you understanding. See, when I share these things, I told you, see, there are, there are things the Holy Spirit would, would teach you and bring you to the place of understanding. I beg of you, let Jesus be your teacher. And he cannot be your teacher when you fold your leg and say, teach me something, Lord. Teach me something, Lord. It's by experience, as you deal with the gospel, as you be a doer of the word. See, because you, you, you can't just sit down there. You've got to be a doer of the word. Go where he tells you to go. Listen to him. Be in real fellowship with him. Obey his command. You see, the command he gives to you, the command he gives to you will bring experience to you. And those experiences that, that is coming your way will open things that you will question him. And when you question him, Jesus said it. He said, abide in me and my word. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. If you stay in him and he leads you, there are questions that will arise in your heart. And when you ask those questions, he will answer you. And what answer do you think he's going to give you? Truth. That truth will make you free. That truth will guide you in the path of eternal life. That is, that is the bundle of things we carry in us. So when we declare we have eternal life, I'm not just confessing I, I, I have eternal life by Jesus, by the Holy Spirit that's coming to me. I'm confessing by the abundance of truth that I carry inside of me. And that's what God wants for me. So today, if you will make up, I say, this is the beginning part. Deliberately give your heart to the Lord Jesus. And I say, what that means is give your mind to him. Let him begin to teach you. Let him begin to help you operate. Let him begin to help you navigate through life. Step by step, step by step, you will come into that place of knowledge and supernatural wisdom. Then you will begin to enjoy the manifestation of eternal life. Praise God. Our time is up. Have the best, have the best weekend ever. In the name of Jesus. Bye.